Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the Retreadcast, our regular video podcast series for the Thai retreading industry. As usual, I'm joined by my father, David Wilson, publisher of Retreading Business. David, I'm sure you've got a lot to tell us and you've got, I'm sure there is an intriguing program lined up for us today. Tell me, who will you be interviewing on the Retreadcast today? Thank you, Richard. The Retreadcast is designed to cover developments in the retreading industry from all over the world. But this week, we're staying in the UK and paying a long overdue visit to the country's largest independent retreader, Baculog, which was acquired by Zenesis two years ago. Today, I'll be interviewing the company's new managing director, Jorge Crespo, who took over the reins at Baculog's Grantham HQ in June. And for the interlude in the middle of the podcast, I'll be looking at some of the topics covered in the new issue of Retreading Business, which is now available in digital format. Well, as usual, that sounds like a wide and varied programme for us to look forward to. So without any further ado, let's get straight down to Link, the Lincolnshire town of Grantham, famous as the hometown of ex-British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, where Jorge Crespo was interviewed by David. It's now two years since the UK's largest independent retreader, Vaculug, was acquired by the Zenesis Group, and today on the Retread cast, we're delighted to welcome Jorge Crespo, who replaced Tim Hercock as Managing Director of Vacuolog in June. Jorge, welcome to the Retread cast. Thank you so much, David. Pleasure to be here. No problem. It's, uh, let's start by asking this question. It's, it's no secret in the market that Vacuolog's new management feels that significant changes have uh, needed to be made in order to move the company forward. Could you give us an outline of how that strategy has been formulated and what the key cornerstones of that strategy are? For example, how does the company define itself primarily as a fleet marketing company, as a retreader? Perhaps you can uh, outline uh, an answer to that. Uh, well, yeah, uh, where to start? I, I, I'd say that the um, strategy going forward, uh, or Vaculog strategy, is slightly different from uh, previous strat- strategy and from the previous uh, management and shareholder, uh, in the sense that uh, for the last few years uh, uh, we believe that Bacillus was uh, geared for uh, or, or to be sold, and and then once the acquisition uh, was completed, uh, obviously we did need to to do quite a lot of investment, change uh, uh, slightly the strategy, and and prepare the company for growth, and that's our intention. In, in the next few years. Uh, this this year has been an interesting year in terms of consolidation. Uh, there's a lot of things happening uh, outside uh, Vaculoop, but also inside Vaculoop. We, we're taking this time as an opportunity to um, prepare ourselves for, for the future, uh, whatever that future uh, or whatever shape and form that future is. Uh, but um, we, we're taking a lot of um, uh, steps uh, to invest on on the company, invest in talent, in equipment, uh, in IT systems, and so on and so forth. So we can discuss it, that a little bit later on if, if you wish to. Uh, the second question, I believe, it was uh, how we would define uh, Bakilook. I, I think it's a, we are in a very yeah. unique position in the sense that we. Do we, we are the, as, as you said uh, before, the largest independent uh, retail company in Europe. But not only that, uh, we are not only a manufacturing plant, but also uh, we have a, a, a strong management system uh, where our customers are fleets uh, and, and we, we are service provider from that perspective. So, so it's, a, it's a nice blend between uh, a service provider and service solutions and a manufacturing uh, to deliver the, the most cost-effective uh, proposition to our customers. Okay, so th- let's go on to talk about uh, the investments you're, you're making. Uh, what investments are, are you making in terms of plants, in terms of systems, and in terms of uh, new products? Uh, well, the most important or, or the uh, foundation of Vaculook is or how we see it is the people. So that's, that's what we invested the most uh, this year. We uh, recruited 26 new people in the last few months. Uh, we're still expanding 
uh, the, the group of people that we have in different areas. We've reinforced the operational side of the business massively. Uh, and the idea is uh, we have more people looking after the needs from, from our customers and, and restructuring in a, in, in a way that makes more sense as well. Uh, that's, that's one of the foundations and the, uh, the stones, the, uh, the pillar stones of Bakelook. Uh, we are heavily investing in, in uh, IT systems and software. Again, uh, we, we got something called the VMS, uh, which is the backlog management system. And, and that has been one of our strengths all, all over the years. I mean, it was one of the, uh, the first of its kind, its kind uh, to be developed. Uh, and we are investing in, in that. So we partner with Microsoft uh, and, and we're implementing Dynamics. Uh, and we're expecting to finish with implementation of the new software and IT systems by April 2021. So we are developing as well a, a CRM, a, a new ERP for the factory and, and so on. And finally, uh, last but not least, is uh, obviously we, we need to develop new products. We, we launched uh, about six different products this year. Uh, so obviously the, the factory is uh, benefited from, from a large investment uh, with these different equipment tooling. We've added as well uh, new shifts, so we are producing more tires, uh, and we have more people than uh, what we had last year, which is uh, considering the uh, the times we live in is uh, is, is quite reassuring for everybody. You, you mentioned the, uh, the the personnel changes. You've made quite a number of of changes uh, in terms of personnel recruiting from right across the tight distribution and fleet management sector. Can you give us an insight into the strategy that you're following with regards to personnel and what you believe the benefits of these changes will be for the company? Well, we are trying to change the culture of the company, uh, um, uh, keeping uh, what uh, the company, uh, the DNA of the company, obviously. We, we celebrated this year the 70th anniversary of Aculuk uh, with a big party. Uh, where we invited all the families of employees, suppliers, customers, and, and so on. It was a great success. So we are trying to keep that side of the business because still it's a family-owned uh, company. Uh, but uh, at the same time, we, we are trying to uh, slightly change the culture, become a little bit more dynamic, uh, more forward thinking. Uh, and, and, and in order to do that, we need to... Uh, a blend of uh, experienced people with uh, new ideas, new blood into the company. And, and we created new departments like the business excellence uh, department. Uh, we are improving our process and systems. Uh, and, and as I said before, you know, the, the skeleton is there. We are reinforcing uh, the, the different departments, uh, whether it's sales and operations, whether it's marketing, uh, new employees of marketing as well, customer service, uh, our call center as well has been expanded and uh, so has as well our, our operation department and yes, uh, the factory, uh, the maintenance department in the factory and yeah, we added a, a number of people in different key positions. Uh, but, you know, the, the, I was discussing with some of the employees today, I think, you know, the, the atmosphere is, is quite cheerful, it's very bubbly and, um, you know, everybody is... Uh, uh, feels uh, we are privileged to be to be where we are in the sense that we've been very very lucky considering what is going out there in the world you know uh, 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 this year um, you know very proud to be part of this team and that's it for part one of our interview with Jorge Crespo We'll return very shortly to hear the remainder of David's interview with Jorge. But first, regular readers of Retraining Business will no doubt be interested to hear about the featured articles covered in the latest edition of the magazine. David, what's in store for us in the latest issue? I guess COVID-19 is still a key topic. Well, yes, that's, uh, that's true to a degree. We do have an in-depth report from our US correspondent, Ron Elliott, about how some of the main suppliers of the retread sector, namely Central Marketing, ATEC, Tesco, Intelmatic, and Shamrock Marketing, have been dealing with the pandemic. 
and indeed many of our other stories draw reference to how the market's been changed this year by what has happened, but it would be remiss of us to have concentrated too heavily on this. First off, we have a report from Bypavers General Assembly, which is, this year was carried out online, highlighting changes in the Bypaver organisation, as well as reports on the activities of Bypavers Technical Committee, and an update on the current state of the European retreading sector. This, of course, is backed up with the review of the recent retread cast interview we carried out with Michael Tremline. Also on the association front, we have a review of the Italian Retreaders Association, IEPS General Assembly in Bologna. Fantastic. Well, I'm sure that will make for intriguing reading. Um, one other area that we've always attempted to provide detailed coverage on is um, concerning developing markets around the world. What have we got in store for our readers with regards to these markets? We have some good stories from Africa in this issue, including a feature on Paul Malambo, a Zimbabwean national who runs a retread operation called 633 Tires in Gaborone, Botswana. And we have an article on how the Indonesian tread rubber manufacturer, Kartindo Rubber, has penetrated the Tanzanian market with its customer, Smart Tires in Dar es Salaam. Interesting. I always take great pleasure in, in learning about markets that are um, maybe not as fashionable, not as well known as, you know, the main retreading markets in the world. Um, but concerning more, you know, uh, bigger players, what, what do we have in store uh, with regards to the Indian market? Yes, uh, Satnam Singh always has plenty of stories for us from the fast developing Indian markets. This month, he reports on a number of members of JK Tyres Franchise Network. Plus, there's a feature on one of Kerala's leading tread rubber manufacturers, CRI Rubbers, who are making progress in a number of overseas markets, including in North America, where they've uh, recently set up uh, a warehousing facility. Brilliant. Well, it sounds like a lot is, a lot is uh, going on in, in India in this edition. Um, we also have an Eastern European... <laughs> Uh, Vladislav Vorotnikov and he usually has a number of uh, fascinating insights for us from, from that part of the world. What is Vladislav um, reporting on this month? Well uh, Vlad's written uh, an interesting piece on the Russian retreader DA group. He's written an update on the retread market in the Baltic states and we have an interview with Piotr Sarnetsky who is uh, Director General of the Polish Tire Industry Association. Interesting. So that, that seems very, very thorough. And we have a, well, it looks like we have numerous markets covered as ever. Is there anything else you'd like to mention? Well, yes. Uh, last month on the Retread cast, we had the opportunity to speak to Guy Haywood, Hancock's Marketing and Strategy Director for Europe. Uh, and he was able to give us his perspective on current trends with the retreading sector from a tyre manufacturer's perspective. Uh, as well as highlighting Hancock's strategy for retreading within its business. We're pleased to be able to include that interview in full. Brilliant. Well, you know, touching back upon, back upon Hancock, um, that brings us full circle and brings us very neatly back to return to part two of our interview today with Jorge Crespo, um, because Hancock's uh, key manufacturing partner in the UK happens to be Vaculog who, as mentioned, are, are the main subject of today's retreadcast. So let's return to, to Grantham right now for the second half of our interview with Jorge Crespo. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, certainly this year has been very difficult for, for everyone in, in, in all types of industries. So perhaps you could expand a little bit on, on how the uh, COVID-19 crisis has affected business for Vaculum this year and, and what strategies you've implemented to deal with it. Obviously, the pandemic has affected everybody and, and that is a fact. And uh, potentially is there to stay. Uh, obviously, we, we all react in different ways and forms. And... Uh, and the first quarter of the year started quite strong, so we were growing year on year about 24% versus last year. Uh, but I think that was the dynamic as well of the, of the industry, potentially. 
uh, and then come to April and May, uh, it was a um, it was difficult difficult months for for everybody, I guess. Uh, we weathered the storm better than most, in the sense that we uh, uh, we kept producing uh, longer than most manufacturers. Uh, we closed the factory, but also we timed it in a way that it was uh, due for maintenance anyway. Uh, and also we had far too much stock. In the sense we couldn't uh, uh, held more stock. So uh, we decided yes to close the factory for a few weeks, uh, but we opened more uh, earlier than most as well. Uh, and um, now it's non-stop. I, I think that's part of the industry. The industry is, uh, is, uh, is doing well or relatively well. Uh, but everything that we are producing is, is coming out. So, so we are enlarging as well the, the, the number of fleets and customers that we, we manage. And that's possibly part of, part of, the, uh, of the issue. But uh, yes, the pandemic is there. We, we abide by the rules. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I don't think we, we have to expand on that. We've done a lot of changes uh, in terms of production and manufacturing in terms of the office sanitizing and uh, social distancing uh, and, and so on. So, but uh, we are ready from the office perspective. Uh, everybody can work from home if needed. And, um, you know, it hasn't really affected the way we do things. Good. Well, let's talk next about some of the uh, specific areas uh, that Vacilog uh, deals in. Uh, you, you've always been very strong in the specialist off road sector uh, as a company. Uh, what, are your, what are your plans for these uh, diverse markets? Well, in fairness, it's not only the, uh, the overall market. We, we are expanding, and, and Vacuolook is, is made out of uh, several business units. Uh, uh, we have a, an OTR uh, uh, business unit, which is uh, we are growing. Uh, we are partnering with uh, a number of premium manufacturers, uh, whether it's Yokohama or whether it's Magnetize, and and we are developing that uh, that business. Uh, we added a couple of people there in, in that department, uh, but uh, we are also uh, trying to diversify our portfolio. So we we are uh, adding more customers, more fleets coming from municipal waste. Uh, so uh, obviously logistics is a very important part of the business for us. Uh, so we had another couple of companies, small companies that service uh, repairers as remolders, like the Thai Equipment Company and Grumac. So there is a number of business and, and what we are trying to do is just uh, 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 expand those business and and being a little bit more agile as well on what we do. So we are growing organically, but of course we are not, um, uh, we are not disconsidering any acquisition. So acquisition might be in, in the future uh, a way forward as well. Uh, do you have a strategy to develop a vacuum position in overseas markets? Well, our plan is, uh, our core business is the UK market. So that's what we want to focus our efforts. We, we don't want to digress and, and or, uh, uh, do something differently. So that's, that's our business and our, our core business with Brexit as well and, and the position in the next uh, few months. Uh, we were sent, well, not, not focusing in, in, in Europe right now. We do have some business in Europe, uh, a little bit of a transactional business with different companies in Romania, in Spain, and so on. But um, it's, it's something that is not our focus right now. Our focus is, is primarily the UK. Okay. Uh, and finally, to, to summarize, where does the future of retreading lie, in your opinion? And, and what role do you think Bacula can play in that future? Well, after discussing with uh, a lot of people in the industry, uh, we believe that the uh, retrade is, uh, is having a rebirth uh, in a way. It's part of the circular economy. Uh, more and more business uh, having more of a social consciousness and obviously environmental uh, uh, 
uh, an environmental approach is very, very important. Uh, and this, this is going to become part of the new world, you know, uh, whether it's not only in our industry, everywhere, you know, in any trade, people are a little bit more conscious. Uh, the councils are becoming and the governments are becoming as well a little bit more conscious in Northern Europe. Uh, in, certain, uh, in certain markets, uh, retread is already compulsory in in different applications uh, when when it comes down to councils or, or governments or pass and track uh, in Scandinavia, the Netherlands, and so on. So yes, we believe this uh, this is um, uh, is going to develop uh, in our industry, and and we believe we as as being the largest independent retread manufacturer, uh, we do have a, a role to play from uh, doing the right thing and, and trying to lead in that direction to lobbying with the right uh, organizations and uh, government uh, departments. Okay, well, that is a, an appropriately positive point on, on which to finish. So, Jorge, many thanks for your time today, and we look forward to welcoming you back on the Retreadcast soon. Well, that's all for this week. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we look forward to welcoming you back for the next edition of the Retreadcast. Until then, stay safe.